This is Twit. For years, I've been involved with Android. I've just gotten used to it at this point. It's just the way it is. Another vulnerability that leads just to something. Just wear bad. your armor. Just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, all versions of Android running on all devices are believed to be affected because this was a, what we're going to describe here is a core Android function, which Google has fixed in the most recent Android Pie release, but has said they have no plans to fix in older versions. And they're being they're saying you're encouraged to upgrade to Android Pie or later. Well, I don't have to tell you, Jason, you know, the likelihood of that happening. Yeah. I mean, many like in many places you can't. I mean, it's just not an option. You're you're stuck with the Android that you have. Um, and the Android that you have, if it predates Pi, is subject to a CVE. This is the you know common vulnerabilities and exploits database, uh, 2018-9489, which has been assigned to this problem. And all Android devices prior to Pi until they're updated, or maybe there'll be a patch. We'll see. So what's going on? The OS broadcasts on purpose system messages, which are global and which any application can indicate. Uh, they're, they're, they're called intents. And any application can, uh, can raise its hand and say, uh, I'd like to receive those, please. Um, and it then receives them without any user permission oversight. So, the you know these are not things like use the permission to use the camera or you know other major aspects of the system. These are sort of regarded as internal stuff that's going on. Unfortunately, the the messages include the Wi-Fi network name to which the device is currently associated, the BSS ID, the local IP address, the DNS server information, and the device's own static MAC address. Um, some of this information, such as MAC addresses, has long since been recognized as sensitive and it has no longer may been made available uh, through standard Android APIs uh, since Android 6. But now we're at 9, and even in even in before 6, 6, 7, and 8, that MAC address is available via the broadcast. So this argues that the them that, that Google masking the MAC address wasn't you know fully done the the API to request it was it was removed from but you can still raise your hand and say uh, you know broadcast it to me and then you receive it so by listening to these broadcasts which are continuous any application on the device can capture this information um, which in turn has the effect of bypassing all permission checks and existing mitigations. So, it, you know, this leakage does undermine Android's system of permissions. Um, of course, we know that MAC addresses do not change and are tied to the hardware. So this can be used to uniquely identify and track any Android device when even when MAC address randomization is used. Because as we've discussed here, MAC address randomization is the pre-access point association MAC. It was realized some time ago, and Android and iOS both fixed this, uh, and I guess Windows did too, that, that wandering around and not just like anywhere, you know, it, you know we, we, Wi-Fi is so present that it's just, you know, you're bathed in Wi-Fi now. So it turns out that any access point 
could see the MAC addresses of all, do, does see the MAC addresses of every Wi-Fi enabled thing within its reach, even those that don't associate with it, that never have and don't. Um, so, so what we realized was, okay, that's not so good. So MAC address randomization causes the client to just generate an arbitrary random MAC address for what, during the time that it is not associated. But when it associates, only then do you get the true MAC address. So that's sort of a nice privacy trade-off that works and which everybody is doing. The problem is that the any app running in Android prior to 9 is able to, uh, to determine the physical unrandomized MAC address, the network name, uh, uh, and the BSS ID. And of course, there are databases. Uh, there's w uh, Wiggle, W-I-G-L-E, and Skyhook, both which are comprehensive databases of exactly that information, which would allow software to geo geolocate the user using that information even when that software has no has not been gr granted any location permission when location is completely shut off uh, on the device presumably because the user wants privacy this is still disclosing it so uh, uh, unless some sort of mitigation is made available uh, this is the way it's going to be on all Android prior to nine. Um, there's a, a cool website. Um, uh, I thought I had it here. The website. Um, Are you talking about the app or? Yeah. The Android broadcast yeah, monitor. Broadcast logger. Or let's see here. Int uh, internal yeah. broadcast monitor. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, it, it was. Yes. Internal Broadcasts Monitor is the application developed uh, by a developer who also put the source on GitHub. Er, Internal Broadcasts Monitor is available through Google Play. And uh, so you can install it from the Play Store. You tap start and you start observing all of the traffic which is available to it not having obtained any permissions whatsoever. You look for android.net.wifi.statechange and android.net.wifi.p2p.thisdevicechanged messages and the data they carry, and you will see all this. So, uh, you know, not a huge problem, but if, an, if a user is interested in not being located yet th the only way to do that before nine and until this is maybe fixed by a third party patch or maybe google will reconsider their position but on the other hand there's all these phones that are not google and that are not being uh, patched um would be to turn off wi-fi because uh, it basically is by you know the the, the software is still going to know your mac address well okay you know, you stalled it on your phone, so that's where it is. But uh, these days, Wi-Fi is is essentially leaking your position by virtue of the fact that we have databases of of just comprehensive databases of of network names and BSS IDs, and software is able through these messages to know uh, what you're connected to and what device you are, and so produce long-term tracking. And of course, you know, it's able to send the information out wherever it wants to. So uh, we may be talking more about this in the future. <laughs> it's it's kind of disappointing when they stop at like the current version with nothing prior. I mean, this Pi is on so few devices that it doesn't even make Android's developer platform for show or the dashboard for showing how many you know percentages of all the reporting devices at what <laughs> OS like Pi is not even on there yet, which basically means it's wow. less than 0.1 percent distribution at this point in time, at least at the you know the time that this report was pulled. So it's not even appearing on their report that tracks this stuff. Let alone those are the only devices that actually get any of this protection. So it's not inaccurate to say, kind of at this point, virtually all yeah. Android devices.
are, are currently uh, enabling this broadcast ing yeah. and any and any apps which will i imagine will start appearing uh <laughs> are able to well because i mean it's it's meant to be system global broadcasts so mm -hmm. the fact that an app is is saying i i want to watch these doesn't you know, I mean, it, it's not going to make the app stand out. It's not something where Google can say, oh, you shouldn't be asking for this. No, it's it's a broadcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Google obviously knows this is not a good thing. They patched it. Uh, That's you know, why they, so. yep, why they fixed it. That's a bummer.